Okay, we got a lot of questions about what the rocks look like at different parts of the uh, tumbling process. This is uh, just basically some raw rocks that we ran through stage one, which is a pretty rough grit. So they're not going to be shiny or anything like that, but they've got most of the blemishes off. They should be pretty rounded. A lot of these will probably run again, but we can at least take a look and show you what it looks like. Okay, so that's a little bit atypical for how this looks. This usually looks a little bit darker when we open it. But uh, all that gray is uh, bits and pieces of the rock that have been worn off. Put this out here and uh, combined with the grit that's been in here, slowly polishing these rocks up. So, then dump it out here. See, it's kind of a muddy slurry in there. Not the prettiest stuff in the world. Let's rinse it all out here. And as you can see, the rocks we are tumbling are all unicate. Combination of epidote and feldspar, which is epidote green and feldspar pink red. Depends on the type of rock, of course. We'll move this out of the way. Use this to just kind of rinse everything out here. I pour this on the uh, grass near my trailer so it basically puts the cement on all the grass and kind of kills it out. It's not working too great, but it's a good theory. Now it's very important to get this as clean as possible. You don't want this grit going into the next stages. Now, with my setup, what I've done is I've uh, put a number on each one of my barrels. I have four barrels that correspond to the four different steps of the tumbling process. So this is barrel number one. So the only thing that'll ever be in this barrel is uh, level one tumbling material, number one grit. So I don't have to worry about the wrong type of grit getting in. But that being said, once we take a look at these rocks, I'm still gonna wanna rinse them off really good and make sure none of the tier one grit stays on them. Now you can see really pretty rocks. Um, they won't look this way when they dry out. They'll start to dull and fade a little bit because we've only just lightly polished them so far. We've just kind of got the rough edges off. And some of these, like this one, still have little bits of imperfections on them. So they're going to take some work. You can kind of see right there at the corner, that's where it's starting to dry out. That's what it's going to look like when it's dry. When it's wet is what we want it to look like in the very end. So start taking a look through some of these rocks real quick just kind of glance at them you can kind of see what the unikite looks like it's a combination of the feldspar the red mixed with the green very cool looking and you can see how beautiful these rocks will look once they're fully polished just kind of a look around kind of hoping to use these in a in a glass lamp for Heather on her side of the bed that'll have all these rocks in it and just kind of be able to look at them whenever we want to so very cool that's what they look like after stage one we're gonna clean them up a little bit rinse them off a few times put them in and get them ready for stage two we're gonna start a new rock on stage one and we'll show you that as well so we're going through our unikite right now and deciding which of the pieces need to be run again and which ones don't. We've got quite a few that are going to move on to stage two, but I wanted to show you real quick what the rocks look like before we even put them in the tumbler. Now, these don't look like very much. They're kind of gray looking, not very exciting. Let me get the hose here and wet them down a little bit. And then we'll take a look at them again here in just a second. Now that we've wet them down a little bit, if you get really close and take a look, they're extremely colorful. All sorts of beautiful colors all the way through them. So that's why we want to tumble these. If we tumble them, it'll get rid of that, that kind of gray haze to them that comes from having lots of imperfections on the outside. The polish will take those imperfections off and hopefully leave us with rocks that look something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the unikite that still has chips and stuff in it from the first run and put it into the bucket 
along with some of these and run them together and see what we can uh, do to polish them up. So I'm gonna grab some of these. I've got a few more I'm gonna fill in here. We usually fill this up about two thirds of the way full. We got Heather over here sorting through the unikite that we opened up earlier. She's identifying some of the ones we need to rerun because of chunks like that that we need to uh, polish out. And, uh, little cracks like that. We're hoping that running these one more time on stage one will kind of smooth some of those things out for us. But some of them, like the ones over here in her hand, are pretty smooth. And those are ready for stage two. So I'm going to grab stuff that needs to be repolished and tuck it in here. Again, you can see some of the beads from our stage four polish. I still have to kind of rinse those out a little bit. Got it just about as full as we want it. Maybe one or two more stones. Got another one that needs to be run. There we go. And it needs to be run again. That one seems okay. And this one's this one's got a little bit of a divot, not much. I think it might go away with the stage two though. So we've got the bucket of rocks for stage one now. And uh let me get out the other parts and I'll show you what it looks like as we get it prepared. Okay, we got the uh polish out here, we got the scoop to measure it, and we got the rocks ready to go, so just need to open up the polish. And the polish that you kind of look in there is kind of a grayish gritty stuff rough to the touch kind of feels like sand i usually scoop it out put a couple decent sized scoops in and the more grit you use obviously the more abrasive it'll be and then once we got the grit on the rocks there we add enough water to fill it up pretty close to the top not all the way. You're going to leave a little bit of space for the humbling action. So we'll fill it up just enough to maybe to be close to covering all the rocks. That should be about good. And then, once that's done, we take the rubber lid here, kind of nest it inside. It fits right in there nice and tight. And then we have the cover for number one, and like I said, I, I keep them numbered so I know which one's which, and I don't mix them up with the grits, I don't have any chance of cross-contamination. And then this little screw goes on it, as tight as possible because we don't want it to leak. And then we take the barrel over to the tumbling devices. Now I've got my... Number four, I'm going to run it with a little bit of dish soap, and that's right there. I'm going to put that exactly opposite the other one on the double tumbler, and that's what it looks like. And then run it down here and plug it in, and you can kind of see how much noise it makes. So one of the questions I got earlier was how much noise it makes. And I'm talking with my normal voice, which many of you have noted is kind of quiet, and you can hear that the tumbler isn't much louder than me. It's actually quite quiet. So this will run for, um, the number four will run for a day or two just to kind of clean out all the extra polish. The number one there will run for a week or two and just let it clean out all of those imperfections on the rocks. And so that's kind of it. You can walk away and come back and visit it another day. So that's our rock polishing process, and uh, we'll come back again when we've got some more rocks to show. All right, here we are. It's been a week. Both of these have been running for seven days. Uh, we're going to pop them open and kind of see how everything looks. Uh, these have already gone through the phase one. They were nice and rounded. Um, most of the major blemishes were off, so we ran them on phase two, which will clean up a little bit more of those blemishes. And then these over here are brand new raw rocks that we threw in here. 
I'm random through number one, which should hopefully get rid of the uh, blemishes and make them look really nice. So we'll pop them open and we'll take a look. So here's our Unikite. Uh, we just ran a tier one on this one. Uh, as you can see, they're all a little bit wet still, so they still shine just like they've been fully polished. I'm really impressed by how well these took on the shine. This is more what it's going to look like when it's dry, so not the super sheen that we're used to seeing, but it's, they're going to look pretty darn good for just having gone through phase one of the tumbling process. As you can see, some really beautiful epidote and feldspar, different colors and stuff. We'll get these going on tier two and start a new tier one. So these are the rocks after phase two. As you can see, they're pretty rounded. Not quite shiny like a polished rock, but uh, they're making progress. Um, they look kind of faded and, and hazy now, and that's because the polishing is not finished. But uh, if I wet them down, you can kind of get a preview of what they might look like once the polish is done. And there's some really beautiful stones in here take a look at some of these lots of purples and reds and yellows and that but they're gonna look really nice you can see the color really pops when they're wet so uh, we're gonna start these on phase three and see what they look like after that and then we'll put them in for a final polish okay we got the tools we need got the thermometer sitting here got our uh, tumbling barrel and we've got our hose we're gonna rinse it off here so let's grab that and dump it right in here some of the rocks coming out as you can see all the little beads and stuff in there those are the plastic beads that help cushion the flow and i'll rinse these out and use them again in a future tumble but let's rinse off the rocks and see what they look like See all the the white that's coming out on either side, and also that's a little bit of polish, and it's a little bit of what's been rubbed off the back. So you can also see it a little bit over here on the lid, which I'll rinse off, and I'll put it inside the colander, and just in case there's any plastic beads, so we don't lose the beads. <laughs> So, we got the rocks out. Let's take a look at what we've got. These are some of the ones that have been polishing for about a week. Got a piece of unikite there. A different shiny. It's a red and green. Spell spar and uh, epidote. Very free. Still a little bit of a nick over here on the far side, but we'll set it out, let it dry, and make sure it looks okay when it's fully dried out. They should be just as shiny as they appear right now when they're dry, so... See how they look. They feel very, very smooth, so it's very nice. This, I'm guessing, is a piece of epidote. I'm not really sure. It's gorgeous, though. It's got all sorts of cracks and stuff all the way through it. We'll again, set these out and let them dry. This was one of the pieces we found up north in the Cubanaw. Had a bunch of, like, lightning strike patterns all the way through it. Looks really nice. A lot of cracks still in this one. A lot of little nicks and stuff. May want to run this again just to see if we can smooth some of those out. So this one may go back in the tumbler some more. And we've got another piece of this looks like a little bit of epidote in here. Not sure. As you can see, there's a bright green, almost yellow split all the way down the inside. I think the end of it is probably granite. There are little pieces of uh, divots and chunks along the side here. You can kind of see them. Not as smooth as the rest of the rock. So this one may need to be run some more as well. Looks pretty good on this side. Set it up and let it dry. Take a look at this one here. It looks like it's still might need a little bit more polish. Let's see what it looks like the rest of the way when it dries. These are the ones I was really interested in. Thinking of making jewelry or something with these. Um, they've got
got a beautiful pattern on them. I don't know if you can see that. It's almost agate-like, and uh, they've come out pretty well. We've been able to slab them down to very small size, hopefully make some jewelry out of them. There are two or three other sections of that rock in here. This is the flat section. You can see lots of little dots and uh, lines and patterns all the way through it. It's very nice. Let's see if we can make some jewelry with that. I do have a, uh, a drill with some diamond chip drill bits that I might be able to use to drill a hole in that and make it into a pendant. There's another one we might do a pendant of. I don't have the right uh, lapidary tools to really polish this and get it in the right shape. So it's kind of a little bit oblong on the end there, but it still looks pretty cool. Lots of nice patterns on it. Uh, some other green and black rocks that we wanted to polish. Now, as these dry, we'll be able to see if the polish really took effect. So normally when they've polished up correctly, they should be nice and shiny like that. But as they dry out, it'll start to get a little bit faded and you won't see the bright shininess into them if they're not polished all the way. So we'll have to check that one as it dries out. There's another one, probably a little bit of epidote. That's a green in it all the way through. You can see there's a little bit of roughness up the top here. Another rack we found um, this one looks like a little bit of conglomerate. I think this one had bits and pieces of copper in it when we originally cut it. It's now shrunk quite a bit, so it must be a pretty soft stone. Again, this one's got some rough spots in it, so I don't know how much more tumbling is going to affect it and how much more tumbling we actually want to do. But we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Um, another piece that we cut here, this is another piece I slabbed. We thought this is, looked really cool. I think it's a type of uh, chalcedony. Chalcedony? I don't know how to pronounce that. But uh, again, just like some of the other ones, it's got some pretty heavy cracks in it. Some indentations. Not quite as smooth, but this side looks really nice. From what I've read online, the blue coloring in here is uh, created from copper. And because we were up in the Keweenaw Peninsula, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's another piece of that one. This one's an actual slab. These uh, plastic pellets are great for cushioning the rocks, but they do get uh, kind of sticky when they're wet. Very pretty. Lots of iron and copper in that. This rock I liked a lot. I kind of liked it because the end here looks like a little window on a forest. It's bright, bright green. I don't know if you can see it very well. This rock is kind of illustrating some of the problems if you haven't got it polished all the way. So you can see down here where it's wet, it's nice and smooth and shiny. But up here near the top, it's kind of starting to get a little bit dull. It's because it hasn't been polished all the way smooth. So we might need to run this one a little bit more, but I do like that little window with the green in it. It's really cool looking. Uh, a few other rocks. We've got a lot of uh, unikite in here, which is a combination of the epidote and the um, felspar, and that's the pink and green rocks. Those look really cool. They usually have a lot of really nice patterns on them. And you can see a few of them here. I've got a couple more in there. And again, some of these still have cracks on the side or little imperfections on them. Not as nicely polished as we would like. But they're still looking pretty good. Okay. All right, so let's pause for a second to kind of rinse these off again, see if we could get some of the rocks up to the top and get the pellets to fall to the bottom. This one we found, it's got all sorts of yellow cracks through it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's looking pretty good as far as the polish. We might want to do it just a little bit more. Might also hit it with some mineral oil to kind of fill in the cracks and give it a really nice shine like it looks like when it's wet right now. There's a little bit of imperfection here on the back. But uh, if you set that up on a shelf somewhere looking like that, that'll look really nice. So, there's that one. 
Um, here's another piece of that stone I said that had looks like lightning all the way through it. As you can see, this one's got a pretty big crack in it. This was one of the outer pieces. This side is starting to flatten out. A little bit of an indentation there. Not too bad. Still pretty sharp looking. Got some other rocks in here. Unfortunately, I'm not a geologist. I don't know what a lot of these rocks are. A lot of them are, this looks pretty, and we decided to pick it up. And we decided to polish it. And that's what it ended up looking like. This is another part of one of the rocks I polished. It's got a lot of purple and green colors in it. Intermixed with some red. There's some red in there. This one's mostly smooth. There are some, some imperfections along the edge. We'll probably run these again with all the pellets and then put in some dish soap just to kind of clean them out a little bit. And some more of that. It's really cool looking on the outside. Now these out here are starting to dry out a little bit and as you can see, they're still extremely shiny. So that means the polish has done a pretty good job on Polishing them up and making them look really nice. Let's see what we got here. We got a lot of beads. A lot of these rocks have agate-like qualities. They've got kind of the the rough little edges that look a little bit like uh, fractals all along the edge, but not really the banding that we uh, associate with agates. This rock was interesting. It was uh, kind of a deep purple rock with lots of green spots all the way through it. Uh, this rock was a lot bigger when we started, so I'm thinking that it's a very soft rock and is starting to slowly erode away in the tumbler. So that might be the best we can do with that. We might have to hand polish if we find any more of these. There's still a lot of rough edges on this too. turned out pretty nice. We found a lot of these type of rocks, especially up near whitefish. They've got a lot of purple and yellow and red mixed all the way through them. This one's got a little bit of a white streak up at the top too. Very pretty. We dig in here and get some of these other pieces out. I think we got a little bit more unikite in here. Uh, Ian and Heather and I were talking about getting lamps that we could put the rocks in. Ian's got his own rock lamp and we've put some stuff in it already. Um, I think Heather was interested in maybe doing a unikite lamp full of the unikite with the green and the red and pinks in it. I think that would be really, really cool. Here's another piece of the uh, purple and green rock that we found. This is the other half of it. I'm not sure how how interesting it looks on the camera, but it's got a lot of really cool patterns on it on the outside. Another interesting rock we found. And, uh, again, exhibiting some agate-like qualities, kind of the, uh, the rough edge, kind of hard to tell, might be banding along the edge, but if it is, it's very small and hard to see. And a couple pieces of unikite in here. This was mostly a unikite run, so most of the rocks in here were unikite. Uh, we just tossed in some of our other rocks to kind of clean them up, especially some of the stuff I slabbed earlier. Some of these are granite, and some of these are unikite, but really pretty pink on that one. Kind of nice. interesting rock we found it had a really interesting pattern on it a lot of orange and green as you can see there's some white up here at the top and when I rub my thumb over it I can feel there are some imperfections in there some areas where that that crack especially is going through I don't know that we'd be able to tumble that out or not but at least this side looks really nice lots of greens and yellows and blues on it cool looking another piece of a little bit of looks like unikite 
maybe mixed in with a host stone. Dig down underneath all this, I believe. Got another piece of that lightning-like stone. This is the inner slab, so this is not the outside edge. So hopefully, shouldn't be too many imperfections on it. But you can see kind of the cracks of lightning going through the whole thing. Got a little bit of a white area up at the top there. As you can see, parts of it are starting to dry now, and they're turning a little bit faded. And what that just basically means is we might need to polish it a little bit more or maybe hit it with some mineral oil so that when it's wet like that, it looks really nice. Uh -oh. There we go. This is another rock we found. I think this is called Galaxy Stone. It's basically lots of little pockets of other stone nested in basalt. As you can see, there's a pretty big hole on the one side of it. But you can see all the little pockets of rocks different minerals embedded in it looks like a, a galaxy which is what it gets its name from like these out a little bit more another piece of unikite looks like maybe some granite it's a pink and red in it this one's pretty smooth feeling pretty good well, maybe one or two other stones in here you can look right here you can see during the tumbling process that one of the stones chipped. That's the piece of it right there. So it is still kind of rough on the stones. So you got to kind of be careful. It will chip the rock sometimes. It's another really cool looking rock. I don't think there's anything else in here. Um, so yeah, that's the final step of our uh, polishing process. We've got another couple of tumbling barrels going. Um, I'm gonna open up another one here in a little bit that just finished phase one We'll start some start that one on phase two and start some more on the phase one and start running a whole bunch of them through We've got lots of rocks That we're gonna run from our trip earlier this summer and we're kind of hoping maybe we can find uh, a few more rocks Later in the summer on our second trip when we're up in the Kibanaw, Try to find some agates and stuff. So thanks for hanging out with us. and We'll see you again soon